Welcome to another episode of TE Destinations. I'm your host, Rob, and today we are back again in the Tuscan countryside covering the towns of Pisa and Lucca, and of course, the wonderful Leaning Tower of Pisa and one of the most beautiful cathedrals in Italy. Andiamo! We are back, back, back again into Tuscany, and who wouldn't want to return here a thousand times? Our destinations, Pisa and Luca. It takes less than an hour to get to Pisa from Florence by train or less than three hours from Rome. From the Centrale train station, it's a hop, skip and a jump to one of the most famous sites in Italy, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It can be found in what is known as the Piazza del Duomo, or it got an even fancier moniker, the Piazza dei Miracoli, coined by the Italian poet Gabriele D'Annunzio, and you can easily see why. We have here some of the most beautiful treasures of Romanesque Gothic architecture in the world, and they all form part of this Pisano church complex of a cathedral, bell tower, baptistry, and cemetery. To see these beautiful buildings in the context of the meticulously curated green lawns is truly awe-inspiring especially when the white or gray marble is contrasted to the perfectly blue sky. We take a trip inside the Museo dell'Opera del Duomo to get to see some of these amazing sculptures and decorative pieces up close and personal to get an appreciation to the dedication and hard work put into creating these pieces. From the heavenly examples of golden perfection to the literal bowels of hell depicted in fresco, we transport ourselves to the mysterious covered cemetery of Camposanto. These amazingly horrific frescoes done by Buffalmacco were done shortly after the Black Death plagued Europe. Ahem, I won't be having what he's having. The fresco cycle cover over 2,600 square meters and painted over several centuries and had many artists participate, including the famous Benozzo Gozzoli. Let us not forget that this is a place of burials, and as we observe the several different tombs, you can see how the styles of the monuments change drastically through the ages, the Baptistry of St. John is actually the largest baptistry in Italy and harkens back to a time when you were not allowed to enter a church unless you were baptized. As beautiful and ornate as it is on the outside, it is just as amazing for its sacred simplicity on the inside, and it's known to have exceptional acoustics. Ah, the Cathedral of Santa Maria Assunta, one of my favorites in Italy. It started around 1063 by the architect Buschetto. It is a perfect example of Pisan Romanesque architecture on the outside, but Buschetto had mixed in examples of Byzantine, Lombard Emilian, and even Islamic on the inside. Here we are at the famous tower. It had been closed for many years, and I feel so lucky to be able to go up in it and share this with you, so much so that I was willing to go beyond my fear of heights, although the wind got the better of me. Did you even know that this famous leaning tower is actually a bell tower for this church? I only found out when I first came to visit here. The tower was started in 1173 and five years after it began, it already started to sink. So this is my first time in 24 years of living in Italy that I got up to the leaning tower of Pisa. And it's a big one. It gives you quite an impression of something about to fall over when you get to the top. It's really Hence my slight terror and vertigo as the wind pushed me around. The view was incredible and so worth it. I have no regrets coming up here at all. What an experience! Well, after that, it's time for a lunch break to enjoy some tantalizing Trebbiano and some scrumptious Tuscan cold cut sandwiches. We head out to our next stop, which is 30 minutes away from Pisa, the fascinating town of Luca. It harkens back to Etruscan roots, but really became a town in the second century BC. What I love about it is these amazing walls that are intact from the Renaissance. Slipping down from the walls that are actually like strolling through a park, we come upon the Cathedral of Lucca, dedicated to St. Martin. I always love to be able to walk the perimeter of a church before entering it if I can. The Italian Gothic style is always a sight to see. The interior is filled with delightful treasures bursting with colors and surprises, including the face of Christ carved in wood by his contemporary Nicodemus. The Church of San Michele, built on the ruins of the Roman form, is not to be missed, 
and this outstanding facade that, if you look closely enough, is quite different from the others that you have seen today. In deep contrast, though, is the simplicity and darkness that fills the interior, but there is a bright glow emanating from the painting done by Filippino Lippi. The 11th century Saint Davina waves goodbye to us as we head off in search of a Roman amphitheater and a cocktail. The Piazza dell'Amphiteatro was originally a 2nd century Roman amphitheater that lies 3 meters below and could hold up to 18,000 spectators. And now for a drink. Thanks for watching our video and a special thanks to Through Eternity Tours. Please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click on that bell when you want to be notified of any new content that we have uploaded. Oh, that was the last word. Like, <laughs>